So long as speech has to be employed, use your words sparingly. Listen. And try to assimilate what others say. And only when necessity demands, utter a few words measured out in homeopathic doses, as it were. Have you not noticed that where large quantities of allopathic medicine fail, a few drops of homeopathic medicine sometimes works wonders? What is the hidden motive behind talkativeness? Is it not to display superiority or erudition or else to defeat someone by argument? The force of action is much greater than mere words. Superficial conversation and discussion will not take you far. Practice self introspection and calm the passions of the heart. And you will see how little inclination there is then for talk. Try always to spend as much time as you can in the open air, keeping the body as bare as is practical. Gaze to your heart's content at the lofty mountains or on the wide ocean, and your words will be frank and free. If you cannot do anything else, at least peer at the open sky whenever you have the chance. Little by little, the rigid knots that make up your shackles will be loosened and you will find yourself becoming freer. A fully awakened consciousness functions only through an untrammeled mind and body. To be fettered is to be crippled.
You brought nothing into this world but your naked body. And one day you will have to depart, stripped of everything. If during the short period that lies between birth and death, you were burdened with too many possessions and luxuries, it will be very painful to leave them behind. Keep your body light and your mind will be light. Why do you accumulate wealth and possessions? If you give a straightforward reply, you will have to admit that it is for yourself. But if you ask, what is this self? You will find no answer and your intelligence can take you no further. Who am I? Once you sit down and ponder seriously over this question, you will soon discover that all the book learning that you have crammed into your brain in school and college, and all the practical experience you have gained in active life, are not of the slightest help in solving this question. If you want to discover the origin of the sense of I and mine, you will have to alter the whole course of your thinking and give your undivided attention to the search after truth. Whenever the mind starts wandering, it must be firmly brought back to concentration upon the source of the I. This is the means by which to arrive at self-realization. Do not pay attention to the faults of others. It blurs the vision, defiles the mind, and adds to the load of the world's sin. Therefore try to see only the bright side of things in whatever you perceive. It is the good and beautiful which are true and living, whereas the bad and ugly are only the shadow of what really is. Nobody ever wishes to be bad. When you seek the company of others, remember you are out to find the good and beautiful. Truly, if you are simple and sincere inwardly, as well as outwardly, your heart will be pure and full of joy, and your intelligence and reason sound and accurate. Then you will find good everywhere, 
and nothing will appear to be evil. Making a practice of seeing the good qualities in others, the same virtues develop in yourself. For as you think, so you become. In fact, it gives much greater satisfaction to appreciate the merits of others, even than to dwell on one's own worthiness. To take pleasure in thinking of one's own excellence will only inflate the ego and magnify the faults and frailties of others. Whenever you have the chance, laugh as much as you can. By this, all the rigid knots in your body will be loosened. But to laugh superficially is not enough. Your whole being must be united in laughter, both outwardly and inwardly. Do you know what this kind of laughter is like? You simply shake with merriment from head to foot so that one cannot tell which part of your body is most affected. What you usually do is to laugh with your mouth while your mind and emotions are not involved. But I want you to laugh with your whole countenance, with your whole heart and soul, with all the breath of your life. In order to be able to laugh in this way, you must have implicit faith in the power of the self. And try to bring the outer and inner parts of your being into perfect harmony. making the interests of others your own. Seek refuge at the Divine's feet in total surrender. <laughs> 